Hello everyone and welcome in to episode 162 of Chairside Live. I'm your host Megan Strong and we've got a great show for you today. Dr. Bai is going to discuss digital dentures. He's talking about fabricating an immediate denture using CAD CAM software. Then we've got a great new segment featuring our in-house registered dental assistant Will Schmidt. But first up, let's meet with Dr. Bai. He's got the scoop on a case where he's fabricating a digital denture. See how going digital can make a big difference. Let's take a look. Welcome back to the operatory here at Glidewell Dental Laboratories. Today I want to share with you a case where a patient uh, had a lot of periodontally involved teeth and was in the need of uh, immediate dentures. Uh, however, I was worried that if I went ahead and took an alginate impression, I was going to extract some of the patient's teeth. So I went the digital route, uh, I went ahead and captured the patient's uh, impression uh, digitally, and I was able to utilize that file in order to fabricate a complete denture. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at the video and I'll take you through the case. As you can see in these pre-op pictures, the patient presents with very poor oral hygiene. The patient is diagnosed with generalized chronic periodontitis. What I did for him was I brought him in and I wanted to showcase a digital impression for his initial impression making. And the reason for this is because taking a regular alginate impression, the teeth are at risk of being extracted at the time of impression making. So I went ahead and uh, utilized a uh, TRIOS, three-shape intraoral scanner. And as you can see on the screen, the impression making is uh, made fairly easy using the scanner. And the next step is uh, to actually upload all that information uh, that I captured from the inside the patient's mouth onto a software it's uploaded and the denture is designed. Now before the denture is actually designed, what we did was digitally extracted the teeth. So uh, basically treated this case the same way as we would do in the laboratory on a stone model. We take it and we go through uh, which teeth we want to extract. And in this case, we want to extract all the teeth in both arches. And as you can see, we have an articulated model with the teeth missing now. So the next step is to actually go ahead and import a library of teeth to set up for the patient. And uh, before we do that, I'd like to go ahead and design exactly where the uh, occlusal plane is. And because this is an immediate, we're actually going to use the previous teeth as a guideline. The point is to remove the teeth, have the patient go home with a prosthesis, and, uh, and have something to wear uh, while he's healing. Any little adjustments and mistakes that we make with the immediate, we can fix with a definitive. So uh, the plane of occlusion is set and the arch form is also set in the uh, computer program. And the next step is to outline the uh, actual outline of the, of, the, of the denture base. So as you can see in the pink, the denture base is outlined. And the best part about using the software is that we can um, move around where the wax up is for the base plate. So I think it's uh, extremely convenient to do it digitally rather than analog by using the additive wax technique, which would take quite a bit of time. And uh, the next step is to actually import the denture teeth into the software. And uh, we've already established our occlusal plane. And all we need to do is slight minor adjustments. What I really like and what I'm really impressed with is the ability to festoon the gingiva while this denture is designed. So as you can see, using the festooning tool, technician can go around each tooth and add wax or even remove wax if needed. And we have a nice 360 view of what the final denture is going to look like. Now at this point, we have a digital file that we can utilize for the uh, fabrication of the final denture. One of the things that we do is actually print. In this situation, we're printing the extracted the edentulous arch, both arches, and also we're printing a denture. So a denture can be processed based on what the edentulous arch is. So we're going through the processing of the denture, and once we have that negative of the denture and the duplicate is taken out of the mold, we can place the uh, acrylic in its place and go ahead with, a, with processing. An alternate method is actually to have the denture milled with acrylic material. So uh, if you want to go completely digital, and not have any sort of analog work, the entire denture can be printed. So here we have a nice final product. The denture is ready and the technician wraps it up and sends it back to me for the actual procedure. 
So when the patient returns to me for the second appointment, the extractions, as uh, you can predict, are fairly easy, relatively, especially because of the patient's periodontal condition. So the teeth are gently extracted and all the sockets are curated and cleaned. And the good thing about this case was that um, because most of this, these teeth were retained with, with the tissue, the healing time was fairly quick, as you'll see in the before and after pictures. So here we have the uh, extractions completed, and the denture is uh, relined with Kosoft reline material and delivered on the second appointment. The good thing about this type of dentistry going digital is not really having to worry about extracting the teeth and your preliminary impression when a patient presents with this type of situation along with the fact that it's actually extremely fun to do this type of dentistry. As uh, I spoke to you a little bit earlier, the healing time was fairly quick for this patient, so this is actually two days post-op, and we have a two-week post-op picture, so the extraction sockets are healing fairly well there. So there you have it, a digital denture fabricated and processed analog with the option of being able to mill the final denture. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for that, Dr. Bai. And don't forget, you can earn while you learn this holiday season with free CE courses at GlidewellDental.com. New courses are added all the time, so check back often for our latest courses. It's accredited, informative, and as always, free. Okay, now it's time to go grab your dental assistant because we're about to introduce a brand new segment we like to call Across the Chair. All right, so here we are up in our operatory, and I'm here with registered dental assistant Will Schmidt, who he is the host of your new segment, Across the Chair, where he's going to give you insight from the other side of the chair. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your history in dentistry? Megan, I have about 15 years of uh, clinical chairs had experience, 13 of those in which uh, as a registered dental assistant, worked in just about every aspect of dentistry this far, and now I find myself at Glidewell Laboratories uh, moving my way up. Nice, and what is your role here at Glidewell? I am the assistant to the clinical supervisor. We do all of the tests on any dental products that Glidewell produces. Uh, we also do clinical studies for all sorts of things, long-term effects of dental restorations, and just really anything we're, we're pushing to doing. Nice. And I hear that not only are you so uh, well-skilled in dentistry as a registered dental assistant, but you also are a professional athlete. Can you tell us just a quick little bit about that? That's right. I am a professional ocean athlete. I do hold uh, six stand-up paddle world records, uh, travel the world, uh, doing all sorts of things. And for charity mainly, I'm an advocate for anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress uh, through the Wounded Warrior Project. However, I keep... Uh, keep my role in dentistry because as of today, I still have not collected one paycheck from anything <laughs> else I've ever done in, in, in my professional career. Nice. Well, let's get started on our first Across the Chair. So I'd love to talk today about chairside milling in your own dental office. A lot of times we prep a patient, we take an impression, we send it to the laboratory, and then we don't worry about it. They come back, we put that crown in. We want to start moving forward and working on scanning and milling crowns in our own offices. Whether you're using the CEREC technology or Glidewell Laboratories' own TS-150 with our Bruxer Now technology. Uh, one common misconception about milling chairside is that we're saving money by keeping all of this in-house. What really is going on is this is basically a line item shift. We're either paying the laboratory for their services or we are paying for blocks and burrs and patient time in the chair. So what I want to figure out here is how do we give this benefit to our patients, but at the same time make money and do dentistry? Because if not, we're going broke and we're not doing dentistry at all. Let's begin. The most important thing I can tell you to start off with is always, 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 no matter what the situation is, sending a case to the laboratory or milling at chairside, taking pre-impression. You're going to hate yourself if you don't. So what I want to teach you today is how to let the doctor go into another room and be able to continue the preparations or continue to work on patients while you do the scanning, the powdering, the milling, and the adjustment of the crowns. Now, of course, we understand that only an expected functions dental assistant can place, check bite, and adjust contacts. However, we as registered dental assistants can do everything else up until then. Let's begin. Before powdering and scanning, proper isolation is critical to be able to keep the area dry and for the patient to be able to stay open and still. Uh, I recommend either a bite block and a suction or a product like the Isolite 
to help keep the area clean, clear, and get yourself the best scan possible on the first try. Powdering is a very important step. Uh, saliva is reflective. This powder is going to keep the saliva from interfering with your scan so you get a good, nice scan first time, every time. I like to use a suction just because I don't want any excess powder to get out into the room and bother our patient or myself. Most dental assistants should be proficient with an intraoral camera. If so, then it's very easy to translate that to the intraoral scanning device made by iOS Technologies and 3M. After scanning the teeth that you're milling today, make sure you scan an opposing as well as your bite. Send that over to be processed, designed, and eventually milled. Now the great thing about the Bruxer Now technology, milled in the TS-150 milling unit, it follows along my lines of keeping it simple. Unlike other chairside milling units, the Bruxer Now utilizes one single size block, different shades, one burr. Burr comes with your block, place it in after design, and start your mill. After milling is complete, simply remove from the TS-150 milling unit, get ready to remove from the sprue, polish and get your crayon ready for the placement on the patient. Have you noticed this whole time where my doctor is? My doctor is out prepping teeth and making this practice flow. Now the great thing about these Brooks Chernow restorations is that they are pre-centered so they are already baked and ready to be polished and placed in the mouth unless you decide that you would like to stain and glaze you have the option for that as well. In this case we're just going to polish and place in the mouth. Your armamentarium for this is very simple simply a rubber wheel a Robinson wheel with die shine and something that's overlooked most often, the actual burr that milled your crown in the first place is the best thing that's not going to scratch your restoration. Take that sprue off and any inconsistencies that you might want to remove. Making sure to wear your proper protective equipment. Removal of the sprue is as simple as using a disc, giving it a couple hits, and we're in business. Removal of the excess amounts of the sprue can be as simple as using your disc in short strokes like this. Notice we're not touching that contact area at all. If there's going to be a contact adjustment, your doctor or your expended functions dental assistant will be the one to take care of that. For more reduction, the burr that just milled your crown is able to fit into your slow speed handpiece and using a proper fulcrum can be utilized to remove the remaining areas of inconsistencies and of the sprue. After the sprue is taken off, I like to use my rubber wheel to then get a nice luster and polish all around this restoration. I have the luxury here at Glidewell Laboratories to be able to use an industrial sized micro etching unit. However, most offices, and you should too, especially if you're doing all porcelain, zirconia, or lithium silicate crowns, should have a chair side sandblaster available. Remember, this also increases your bonding strength sometimes of upwards of 300%. Now that we've sandblasted, we use a little Robinson wheel and die shine to complete the process. Always make sure after your polishing is complete, the best thing to remove dye shine is simply an alcohol soaked gauze pad. Your crown is now polished and ready for the doctor to try in, adjust contacts and occlusion. If you've done your milling and you've done your designing right, there shouldn't be any contact or occlusion to be adjusted. If there is, simply repeat these steps before cementation. After the crown has been tried in the mouth, adjusted if necessary, make sure you use a product such as IvaClean to clean saliva contamination or anything to increase your bonding strength. 20 second scrub and spray to clean. In conclusion, make sure you set yourself up for success. Make sure you become proficient with polishing, milling, scanning, all aspects of doing dentistry, chair side, keeping in house and providing that for your patients. Thank you for that, Will. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that new segment. So stay tuned for more Across the Chair in future episodes. We've got something for everyone here on Chairside Live, so pop some popcorn and don't forget to floss and invite the whole office to watch. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Chairside Live. On behalf of everyone here at Glidewell Laboratories, we thank you for watching and hope you'll come back next week.